Now we're going to proceed with uh, the presentation of an opinion, in an opinion exactly about homelessness, uh, eradicating homelessness in the European Union, the local and regional perspective. It's uh, opinion on known initiative. The rapporteur is our colleague Nico Altonen. And now I give him the floor for the presentation for five minutes. You have the floor, Nico. Kiitos puheenjohtaja. Arvoisat kollegat, olemme käyneet laajaa ja erittäin rikastuttavaa keskustelua komissaari Smithin ja Fianssan puheenjohtaja Larssonin kanssa, joten lausunnon pääkohtia ei ole varmaan tarpeen tässä toistaa. Keskustelun aikana monet kollegat käyttivät puheenvuoroja ja niistä kävi hyvin ilmi, että komitean jäsenet tuntevat tilanteen hyvin ja tuntevat tilanteen vakavuuden. Se on mielestäni hyvä lähtökohta jatkotyölle asunnottomuuden poistamiseksi. Tässä vaiheessa haluan myös kiittää kaikkia muutosehdotuksia esittäneitä kollegoja. Kuten muutosehdotuksista koskevasta kannastani ja esittelijän muutosehdotuksista voidaan nähdä, olen ottanut huomioon valtaosan ehdotuksistanne joko kirjaimellisesti tai hengessä. En kuitenkaan voi hyväksyä muutosehdotusta kuusi, koska se ei kuulu tämän lausunnon soveltamisalaan. Haluan kiittää myös asiantuntijaani Y-säätiön toimitusjohtaja Juha Kaakista, SEDEC-valiokunnan sihteeristöä ja poliittista ryhmääni tuesta. Kiitos. Thank you. Um, Miko, we, we don't have any requests for the floor right now. No, we do not have. Um, Nico, I don't know if you want, if you wish to add something as a final, a closing remark on this issue. Puheenjohtaja, voin ehkä todeta sen, että äsken käytiin hyvä keskustelu ja, ja tota, olemme asioista ilmeisen samaa mieltä, niin haluan vielä kerran kiittää kaikkia tästä keskustelusta. Kiitos. Now we're the ones who thank you for your work. So... Now we're going to proceed with a debate on the 2022 European Year of Youth. We have several guests. I salute, I greet them. So dear member, dear guest speakers, we warmly welcome the European Commission proposal to designate the year 2022 the European Year of Youth a year dedicated to almost one-third of Europeans. In today's challenging world, and to build back better after the COVID-19 pandemic, it is vital to consider the youth perspective in all our policies and measures. I would also like to stress the importance of employment, education, enabling young people to thrive and fully contribute in our societies. Moreover, the ongoing conference on the future of Europe, we have uh, an additional opportunity to work together with the young generation in shaping our European future, because they are indeed the future of Europe. So I would like also to draw your attention to the core initiative, the core program for young elected politicians which we intend to pursue and further develop as it is a greatly enriching and mutual beneficial exercise. Let me also mention the European Youth Capitals, an initiative that recognizes the achievements at the local level in our cities and municipalities to respond to youth needs and aspirations and for the empowering young and boosting youth participation. So to ensure a long lasting legacy of this European year of youth, we need to mainstream a youth perspective in all policy areas at EU, national, regional, and local levels, and to involve uh, youth, uh, more young people in decision-making at all these levels. At this occasion, we also welcome the recommendations from the young elected politicians. Finally, I would invite all our commissions to take note of this year and to contribute to its success by integrating the youth perspective in their works in a meaningful way. 
I assure you that the Committee of the Region stands ready to team up with other partners to deliver on the common objective of empowering youth, fostering youth participation, and improving the well-being of our young generation. And without further delay, I would welcome Silvia Markula, President of the European Youth Forum, our first guest speaker today. Thank you so much for accepting our invitation. We are really glad to have you here. Uh, you're um, also a member of our high-level group on democracy. You chair one of the working group of the Conference on the Future of Your Europe dealing with youth policies. So it is my great pleasure to give you the floor and to give you the floor for five minutes. Celia, you have the floor, five minutes. Thank you very much uh, for the floor and thank you to the Committee of the Regions for inviting me to speak today at your plenary session. This is uh, a very great pleasure uh, to be here. My name is Indeed Silja Markula and I'm the president of the European Youth Forum, uh, the largest platform of youth organizations in the world. Uh, we represent over 100 uh, youth organizations and youth platforms uh, from across Europe and, and represent millions of young people from across Europe. And I'm delighted to be here to participate in this debate on the Year of Youth and share ideas on how together we can make this year a resounding, a resounding success. We often hear uh, that uh, we as the youth, that we are uh, the future, but let me also recall that we are the present. We are here and our lives matter as much as those of the older generations. Now, turning to the re resolution of the committee uh, that you have drafted, it seems that we're speaking with the same voice and I agree wholeheartedly with many of the points that you have included and emphasized uh, in your views. In particular, the focus on ensuring that the year is truly inclusive is key. Every young person in Europe should know and feel that this is a year for them. We can achieve this both through providing young people with accessible opportunities to, par to participate at all levels uh, and, and through taking forward meaningful policy change. We know that young people have been disproportionately affected by the COVID-19 pandemic, which has left uh, our education, employment, mental health, uh, all at lasting risk for, for our generation. And now that we focus on rectifying this picture during the year uh, of youth, uh, this will be very crucial using the year as an opportunity to, to really recover from all those different things. Um, for instance, by banning unpaid internships, making sure that the transition from education to employment uh, is, is much smoother and easier for young people. It would also send a clear signal to Europe's youth that even in these precarious and uncertain times, we deserve access to quality, well-regulated employment opportunities. We also know that young people's priorities are wide ranging from, as I said, employment to climate, to health, to the economy, just to name a few areas. And therefore it will be important to involve multiple DGs in the implementation of the year. Most relevantly for this debate, of course, DG Regio, to ensure that the budget for actions comes from multiple programs beyond the two EU youth programs. This would allow young people to uh, participate at all levels and at all the different uh, areas of, of topics that uh, concern our lives. Given this cross-cultural nature of youth policy, I agree with the importance of ensuring that a legacy of this year uh, is the mainstreaming of youth actions uh, across all policy areas at all levels, including the local and all EU programs. We have also seen the power of the Committee of the Regions uh, local dialogues in establishing these two-way discussions with young people and decision makers uh, on the EU political agenda. And I would like uh, to invite the representatives to continue to draw and build on these mechanisms during the year and bring young people's views and their local perspectives to EU decision makers and indeed all policy areas at local level. I appreciate the committee's continued support uh, of the European Youth Capital Initiative and agree with your reflection in the resolution that complementarities between the initiative and the Year of Youth should be sought to reinforce their mutual effectiveness and outreach and bring all that important uh, local perspective to a European level. We also agree with the importance uh, the resolution places on using this year as an impetus to improve youth-specific data collection at all levels for use by policy and decision makers. We're interested in the work of the Committee of the Regions 
that you're already doing on local data collection, such as uh, your study on the local uh, implementation of the youth guarantee. And we believe there's uh, further opportunities like this uh, where we could collaborate. At the European Youth Forum, we're looking forward uh, to continuing our very close collaboration with the Committee of uh, the Regions next year and uh, to seeing the implementation of the exciting and meaningful elements envisaged in your action plan for the year. We believe that you're a key partner in particular to ensure that a strong local perspective is brought and uh, championed during the European Year of Youth. This will ensure maximum outreach to young people, to my generation, at all levels and the delivery of a year that leads to a truly lasting, meaningful change, which goes beyond just the year of 2022 and, and gives us a true legacy for the year of youth. Thank you very much. Well, thank you so much. We don't want to thank you. So now we're going to proceed with the floor and the floor goes to Vitautas Grubliauskas, mayor of Klaipeda. You have the floor for five minutes. Thank you so much, Chair. I will use the opportunity to speak in Lithuania. It's not so often, but sometimes it happens. Thank you so much. So, Klaipeda šis metais gyvena Europos Unimo sostinės ritmo. Dėka jaunų žmonių, kurie parodė iniciatyvą ir kartu su dideliu miesto palaikymu siekia šio titulo du kartus. Antrasis buvo laimingas ir Europos Jaunimo forumas suteikė Europos Jaunimo sostinės 2021 metais titulą Klaipėdai. Tada turėjome viziją ir planą, kaip pasiteikti tikslą, dabar galime vertinti, kokia Klaipėda bus po titulo metų ir kokia įtaka tas turės ateities miestui. Raktas į titulą buvo nuo širdus miesto apsisprendimas jaunimui suteikti galimybę tapti programos kūrėjais ir įgyvendintojais, siekiant spręsti iššūkius, kurie buvo identifikuoti paties jaunimo, kandidatuojant į šį titulą. Taigi, visą titulą įgyvendinimo laikotarpį jauni žmonės buvo jau naujų jaunimo iniciatyvų kūrėjais bei įgyvendintojais, sprendimų prieimėjais, socialiniams pilietiniams kultūros projektams ir pagrindinę tų projektų varomą įėgą. Stebėjame. Kaip dirbdamas kartu jaunimo organizacijos su jaunimu dirbančios organizacijos, įvairios miesto įstaigos ir pavienis jaunimas, kartu su didelių vietos, nacionalinio ir tarptautinio lygmens partnių ir tinklų, įgyvendina titulą viziją ir džiaugiamės, jog ši iniciatyva buvo įgyvendinta Klaipėdėje. Simboliška, tačiau 2021 metais Lietuva taip pat švenčia jaunimo politikos 25 metį, o sekančiais metais Lietuvoje dedikuoti jaunimui kaip ir visoje Europoje. Per 2020 ir 2021 metus įgyvendinome daugiau kaip 400 įvairių renginių. Festivalių, jaunimo iniciatyvų, gebėjimų, stiprinimo veiklų, vizitų ir pristatymų, diskusijų, susitikimų ir nors uždarimo ceremoniją jau gruodžio 17, kitais metais programą nematyta dar per 50 įvairių renginių. Kokį rezultatą matome šiandien? Suformuota nauja bendradarbiavimo kultūra. Aiškiai parodo, kad sprendimai dėl jaunimo be jaunimo nebus priimami. Atvirumas labai svarbus ir turima ilgametė specialistų patirtis, bei jaunatviškas maksimalijumas atneša puikius rezultatus. Užtikrintas jaunimo poreikius atitinkančios jaunimo politikos strategijos įgyvendinimas kartu su miesto plėtro strategija. Užmėgstas tiesioginis dialogas tarp miesto ir jaunimų, bei sukurtos ilgalaikės priemonės jaunimui turėti galimybę būti išgirstam, taip kuriant socialiai ir politiškai aktyvę jaunimo bendruomenę. Matome gerėjantį savo norystės įvaizdį. Įvairių aplausų pagalbą matome, jog savo norystė yra vertinama teigiamai ir priimančio savo norius organizacijos prie to puikiai prisideda formuodamas praktiką įtraukti savo norius ne tik į įgyvendinimo procesus, tačiau į kūrybos procesus taip pat. Turime daug gerų pavyzdžių, kaip jauni žmonės savo norystės pagalbą įgauna įvairių gebėjimų, reikalingų profesiniai veiklai bei tampa priimančių organizacijų darbuotojais. Pasiekėme pavienį neorganizuotą jaunimą, įgyvendinami čius Klaipėdą ambasadorių iniciatyvą. Suformavome aktyvų jaunuolių judėjimą, į kurį įsitraukė dažniausiai neaktyvus jaunimas. Tai paskatino įvairias jaunimai patraukės bendravimo ir veiklų formas. Ambasadoriai taip pat tapo laibai svarbia projekto įgyvendinimo iniciatyvą. Kūrybiškumui projekto metu rybų nebuvo. Matome, jog jaunimas drąsiau žengia savo idėjų įgyvendinimo link, domisi projekto rengimo subtilybėmis ir deda pastangas idėjas paversti realybę. Ir dažnu atveju tokiems jaunoriams prireikia tik padrasinimo. 
Dabar turime suformuotą jaunimo bendruomenę, kuris siekia ir kitais metais įvairių projektų finansavimo fondų pagalbą įgyvendinti projektus. Tai didelis pasiekimas, kai matome ženklų pokytį lyginant su 2018 metais. Miestės įrado daugiau jaunimų į patrauklių erdvių, kurių pagalbą jaunimas gali organizuoti savo renginius, bei leisti laiko su draugais. Grafiti menų kūrinių – taip pat nauja platforma, kurioje grafiti menininkai gali teikti savo pasiūlymus. Puošti grafiti piešiniai siūlomas miesto sienos – pagalba, kuriame naujas traukos vietas mieste. Naujos įmon tradicijos tokios kaip festivaliai, įvairūs renginiai, kuriems numatytas testinumas ir skirti būtent jaunimui, kurią naują mieste įgyvendinamos kultūros projektų įvaizdai. Taip pat matome, jog įvairios įstaigos, kurios įgyvendina kultūros projektus mieste, įgyvendina į jaunimą orientuotus projektus. Tai labai geras ženklas. Siekiant jog miesto kultūrinėm įgyvenime, jaunimui būtų skiriama kuo daugiau dėmesio. Mieste taip pat skiriama daug dėmesio mažinant socialinę atskirtį iki šiol patyrusiam jaunimui. Vis daugiau miesto įstargui laisvalo iki laidimo į vietų labiau praeinamas į varias negalės turinčiam jaunimui. Sukurtos priemonės integracijai, skatinti ne tik socialinėme miesto gyvenime, tačiau ir versle. Suformuota praktika pritaikyti miesto renginius visiems, didinama tolerancija, ūkdoma empatija jaunimo ir miesto bendruomenės, tame skaičiuje ir LGBT atstovams, užsieniečiams, tautiniams mažumoms priklausančiam jaunimui. Visi Klaipėdos, kaip ir Europoje jaunimo sosinės 21 metais tikslai, puikiai atsispindi pas sektorio rezultatuose. Veikdami kartu su partneriais matome, jog Klaipėdos siekiai sutampa su daugeliu ne tik Lietuvoje, bet ir Europos miestų siekiais. Tad esame atviri ir norime dalintis pasiektais rezultatais, gerosomis patirtimis bei pamokomis, kurių išmokėme gyvendinti šitą kalą. Net nebejojame, jog projektas dar ilgai dar įsitaka miesto gyvenimui ir neapsiribos tik tuo. Lietuvos jaunimo sosinė iniciatyva startuoja jau kitais metais, tad Klaipėdos Lietuvai atnešta iniciatyva gavos ilgai ir galima daryti išvedą, jog ateityje ne tik Klaipėda, bet ir visa Lietuva sudarys jaunimui galimį beveikti, kurti ateities labai. Ačiū. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you, your colleague. And now it is my pleasure to welcome Lydia Preira. She's a member of the European Parliament and president of the Youth of the European People's Party. Lydia, you have the floor for three minutes. Hello, good, good morning, and uh, thank you very much uh, for the kind invitation to, to be here. Uh, as a young politician, as president of the Youth of the EPP, uh, to discuss the Commission's proposal to make 2022 the European Year of Youth, and uh, of course take the opportunity to draft the to welcome the draft resolution that will be voted after this session. Well, today the EU is facing long-term challenges in both digital and environmental um, transitions that will have uh, a, a significant impact in the shift that our uh, on how our our societies work. So the decisions we take today will have a tremendous impact on the younger generations and those uh, that are yet to come. Just uh, as the establishment of the Erasmus program in 1987 was one of the most successful EU projects, the EU must be able to involve its younger generations in uh, such wide and uh, accepted uh, programs. With Erasmus, young people understood the need for further European integration, the complexity of European history and culture, and the benefits of the single market. Now, the EU must ensure that these young generations trust and believe in the EU's capacity to shape, shape their future in a sustainable and prosperous way. The European Year of Youth uh, should have exactly this aim, to reconnect the EU's youth with all levels of EU policymaking. Just as Erasmus was uh, only successful due to the intense work of universities, so at the local level, future policymaking in the EU will truly connect with its youth if it allows them to the ability to influence the EU's policies through their local and regional authorities. Therefore, I believe um, a stronger effort must be made to hear the concerns of young people regarding their post-pandemic future and facing the digital and environmental transitions. Um, increased contact with local authorities makes uh, it easier to collect data on young people, which is scarce today, as well as ensure the EU explores not only the relative similarities between young people, but mainly the differences between them. And this is the only way we leave no one behind 
and ensure that marginalized youth feel their future is somehow safeguarded. 2022 should also be the year where EU policymakers truly understand the need for the inclusion of an intergenerational fairness strategic thinking on most European policy areas, knowing the impact uh, or the, 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 the impact policies being drawn will have on future generations with rigorous assessments should be in the heart of the policy making. When taking decisions, politicians must be held responsible, held accountable on how their decisions reflect on life conditions for younger generations. So this is the message I wanted to leave uh, to your debate today. And once again, thank you very much for the invitation and I'll be here uh, to, uh, to uh, follow your work and to keep working with you. Thank you very much. Well, we're the ones who thank you so much for your insights and for taking the time to share with, with us your, your views. Thank you. Now I'll give the floor to Alicia Omsginel, uh, president of the Young European Socialists. You have the floor for three minutes. Muchas gracias, presidente, y muchísimas gracias por la por la invitación a este plenario de, del Comité de las Regiones. Uh, yo creo que este año europeo de la juventud es nuestra oportunidad de cambiar una realidad estructural. Europa tiene toda una generación a su generación mejor preparada, tratando de construir su propio proyecto de vida. Algo complicado cuando no se tienen perspectivas de futuro. Mi generación creció con la crisis financiera de 2008, cuyas consecuencias todavía arrastrábamos cuando estalló la pandemia del COVID-19, una pandemia que no solo ha evidenciado la precariedad en la que estábamos instalados, en parte por las erróneas políticas de austeridad, sino que ha sacado a relucir problemas como la salud mental, que si bien no eran tan evidentes antes, uh, ya estaban entre nosotros. Eh, en este año europeo de la juventud lo que tenemos que hacer es hablar directamente con todos esos jóvenes y esas jóvenes sin perspectivas laborales, económicas o educativas. Porque el éxito de Europa al final es el éxito de quienes tienen menos oportunidades de emancipación y lamentablemente suelen tener uh, en estos casos rostro de juventud. Yo creo que no podemos seguir con una tasa de desempleo juvenil como la que tenemos actualmente y no podemos seguir discutiendo sobre el futuro de Europa con toda una generación dudando del suyo propio. Yo creo que al final este año europeo de la juventud puede y tiene que ir más allá. Tenemos que integrar a todos esos jóvenes y esas jóvenes en este proyecto haciendo de las políticas juveniles una prioridad horizontal incorporada en todas las políticas de la Unión, ya que la crisis del COVID-19 afecta y ha afectado a la educación, al empleo, al bienestar mental y a, todos, y a los ingresos económicos de, de todos y todas las jóvenes. Yo creo que, que debemos seguir en la senda de, de crear empleos de calidad, aprovechando el, el potencial de las transiciones verde y digital, asegurar salarios justos y acceso a la protección social, terminar con las prácticas no remuneradas, garantizar el acceso a una vivienda digna y asequible, que comentabais en el, en el anterior punto, uh, combatir la discriminación estructural que todavía sufrimos uh, en los salarios y las rentas mínimas y la recuperación pasa por, por afrontar todos estos problemas que tienen a su vez un nexo común, que son la ansiedad, la angustia, y la depresión que generan entre los jóvenes. Por eso creo que la salud mental tiene que estar en el centro de este año. Hemos pasado del silencio al debate y ahora tenemos que pasar del debate a la acción. Este año tenemos la oportunidad de construir un futuro para aquellos que están tratando de construir sus propios proyectos vitales y creo que no debemos olvidar que sin juventud no hay futuro para Europa. Así que muchísimas gracias por la, por la invitación a, a este pleno. Uh, lo agradezco no solo como diputada en el Parlamento Europeo, sino también como presidenta de las Juventudes Socialistas Europeas y espero que, que la resolución que adoptéis pues, que sea, sea beneficiosa para todos. Muchísimas gracias. We're the ones that thank you. Thank you so much for taking the time to be with us and to share your views. Now I will give the floor to Inés Oseger, member of the European Liberal Youth. Inés, you have the floor for three minutes.
the information I have is that Inesh will intervene in remote. Inesh Olziger, you Olziger, you need to press the speak button. Thank you. <laughs> Here you are. Working Good out? morning. <laughs> Good morning. <laughs> yes. Go ahead. Thank you very you much. <laughs> Um, in LIMEC, the European Liberal Youth, uh, we aim to encourage young people to be active citizens and promote opportunities to bring change to their societies. We therefore uh, welcome the initiatives a lot. We strongly believe that uh, people with fewer opportunities should also get the chance to be part of the discussions and be able to shape the future and, as Silvio pointed out, the present of Europe. We want the year of the youth to be the year where young people are included at the table for major decisions, starting with the outcomes on the Conference on the Future of Europe. A structural dialogue between the EU institutions and youth organizations towards youth and future-oriented policies has to be the next step. As the future of Europe is especially important to us, we worked hard to gather young liberals from across Europe and collect the proposals for the conference. We are very eager and open to future discussions. Um, one of the proposals that was put forward uh, by us is similar to the youth entrepreneurship in your initiative. We very much welcome this step towards giving youth the tools to take chance into their own hands and removing barriers and dealing with youth unemployment. But we should not stop there. Um, the removal of protectionist policies and additional barriers to, for young people um, that they face when entering the job market has to be tackled too. Finally, we acknowledge that nowadays youth has a great knowledge of society and is more informed than the previous generations due to digitization and increasing uh, connected society. That is why we propose to lower the uh, voting age to 16 for the European elections. This way, young people gain a stronger voice in policymaking. Topics such as education, youth employment, sustainable and future-oriented policies would be given a higher priority on the politi political agenda. I would like to conclude uh, my remarks with the message that is very central to our LIMEC um, and my own political efforts. Youth should be able to do more than just propose ideas. We need to also be included in decision making. And um, I'm very thankful for the invitation to speak here. And uh, I'm very much looking forward to future cooperation um, in the year of the youth, but hopefully also beyond that. Thank you very much. Thank you, Ines. Thank you so much for taking the time to be with us. Now I will give the floor to the president of the European Free Alliance, Youth, Valentina Cervera Clavel. She's online. You have the floor for three minutes. Hi, thank you very much for having me and thank you as well for my colleagues for the interesting and the very much needed points uh, and comments. As we're talking about the European year of the youth, I think from the European Free Alliance, we want actions. We're tired of just listening. It's the year of the youth. We want you on board. We want to be working with you. But we need actions now. As my colleagues have mentioned, our generation has been inherited a crisis since 2008. For example, in my personal case, I was evicted from my childhood home in 2000. Nine uh, due to the economical crisis, and since then my start in life hasn't been it hasn't been the same. Now we're inheriting a crisis from the COVID nineteen, and the expectations for young people to either buy a house, find a job, or you know even just have the life our parents so, so much talked about. It's it's not looking good. I had to emigrate from Barcelona to Glasgow because Barcelona barely had any options for me. I couldn't study and I couldn't work in the place that I grew up and that I loved. So I moved to Scotland where I was able to study for free just because I'm European. And since my four years in that country, I just fell in love 
But this is something that I wish I hadn't had to do. It's something I wish I could have done in my country next to my family and my friends. Education should not be a privilege. Education should be a basic need. And across the European, the European continent, we found that that's not the case. We found that more people and more young people have to sacrifice whether earning money, choosing uh, going to university and putting themselves in debt, or just starting working in a precarious job. We want to have a seat on the table, but not only to be listened, but be taken into account. We're tired of just being listened and say, you are the future. We are not the future only. We are the present as well. And we found that every time we're inheriting governments and more precarious situations that are not working for us, and yet we find ourselves with the issues. When we think about the climate change crisis, it was young people who led the conversation. It was young people who raised the voice for the world to see our planet was dying. When we think of the protests in Belarus or during the Catalan referendum, it was young people at the forefront of those protests because we understand the changes that needs to happen in our future. The system right now, it's not working for us. We are falling through the cracks. Whether you're a minority, stateless nation, or just young from any part in Europe, the system right now doesn't work for you. So I really thank you for having us today and listening to us, but please take us into account. Let's work together for a world where we can cooperate and create a better world for not only the youth now, but the youth to come. Thank you so much. Muchas gracias. Thank you. Thank you for, for being with us. Now I will give the floor to Eleanor Morrissey. She's a co-spokesperson of the Federation of Young European Greens. Eleanor, you have the floor for three minutes. Great, thank you. Can you hear me? I think my camera is Yes, we can but... hear you. We cannot see you, but we can hear you. Oh, well, I think that's okay then. I can just speak. So the European Year of Youth is an opportunity to put youth priorities on the political map, but we need young people's involvement from the very start. So I thank the Committee of the Regions for this opportunity to speak on behalf of the egg and of young people fighting for a democratic and inclusive Europe. Vieg is concerned that this Year of Youth will result in a lot of stylish campaigns, but very little substance. Because 2021 was the European Year of Rail, and unfortunately, that didn't go too far. As young people, our lives are defined by our youth, whether we want to be taken seriously in politics, to be respected and given rights in the workplace, to even be able to afford a decent home. We are the first generation that is worse off than our predecessors. Most of us will never be able to own a home in our lifetime. Since 2008, young people are facing precarity because any job is better than none. But this has left us with unpaid internships, gig work and zero hour contracts. The situation has only gotten worse in the pandemic. And young people who are already vulnerable have now dropped out from education or the quality of education is lower. And we are in a fully fledged climate crisis on a path to heat the world to 2.5 degrees. So all of this precarity is resulting in mental health and well-being issues amongst us young people. So without concrete actions, the European Year of Youth will only remain as youth washing. And currently, the European Commission promises us schemes to improve our access to work, training and education. But these schemes overlook people from small cities and rural communities, migrants and those from low socioeconomic backgrounds. And we are also concerned that the core funding for young people such as Erasmus Plus and the European Solidarity Corps will be limited of the EU promises us new schemes to only benefit a few. So we completely agree with you that the year should not be limited to young people from EU member states, but should also involve young people from the UK, from the Western Balkans and EU partnership countries. And we support the initiative from the Committee of the Regions to promote youth participation in local democracy, as we believe decisions that impact every citizen's life should be taken at the level closest to them. And we believe direct democracy can help show young people how they have the power to influence politics at the local level. So we support more power given to local and regional governments. But with this, more young people and marginalized people should be involved in decision making. So we need to remove the barriers that prevent people from taking part, whether it is economic or social discriminations to be tackled. 
So youth organizations from the European level to local groups need to be strengthened through training and support so they can participate meaningfully. And we want to see the outcomes from the European Year of Youth exist beyond 2022, because we are not the next generation, but the current generation. So I appeal to the Committee of the Regions to follow these closely and to bring these initiatives to young people at the local level. And we look forward to following the outcomes of your resolution and work. Thank you. Well, thank you so much for being with us. Now I will give the floor to one of our young elected politicians, Sandra Schnillock. Schnillock. Um, uh, Sandra, you have the floor for three minutes. Welcome. Thank you so much. Um, dear Chair and dear members of the Parliament, uh, of the Plenary, hello and good morning from Cologne. I'm happy to introduce the recommendations of the young elected politicians of the this year's YAP program. We prepared these recommendations with knowledge from all across Europe, from program members being from rural areas and big cities as well, and everything in between that Europe regions have to offer. To build a bridge between the YAPs and the plenary today, my YAP colleagues were wise or maybe funny enough uh, to choose their oldest member, me, to present our recommendations. So I'm even more delighted to be able to present the younger generation of local politicians in the debate today uh, before I stop being considered as young. Um, experience is not only measured in years, but also in the knowledge that you are able to acquire. So knowledgeable young people can make all the generations quite uncomfortable. But please put any prejudice aside. The young elected politicians have major insights into the challenges and needs of the citizens in their communities and should be heard in all opinions uh, of the Committee of the Regions and in the European Parliament. We prepared 19 recommendations that I trust you all read, so I just want to highlight a few of them. In building resilient and inclusive communities, we call for action for the European Union to provide an empowering and accessible framework for citizens to help them find sustainable solutions for the individual life situations, especially for young people and vulnerable groups. We also call upon the EU to encourage member states to establish participatory processes for young people at local and regional level to decide on their priorities for resilience building. That is that fits the specific characteristics of different regions. We also call for sufficient funding for digital transformation and transition, especially for remote and rural areas to ensure the widespread and efficient in internet structure, digital education to enhance digital skills. And we also encourage women to go into STEM careers and to have them at every table where decisions are being made. For lively democracy and healthy European democracy, we call on the EU to initiate and support regular initiatives, such as the Conference on the Future of Europe, including young local and regional decision makers in a permanent dialogue with citizens and not only during election time. For best practice sharing between young leaders, we ask for a political Erasmus program for young elected politicians to be supported and implemented by the EU. And for jobs and education for young people, we want training, internships and apprenticeships opportunities at EU level and make cross-border work easier when people work in one country and live in another. We also ask for promotion of cooperation between public and private sectors, especially startups and business created by young people. Ahead of the European Year of Youth, let me tell you this, there's experience, knowledge and wisdom in our young generation, especially with the young elected politicians who take pride in pre uh, representing their cities and regions and are ready to take even more responsibility. Please listen to us as we are the present and also the future of Europe. And thanks for the opportunity to speak to you today. And as I could see from my previous speakers, the future of Europe is very much female, which I very much like. Thank you so much. Thank you, Sandra. Thank you for your participation. And now we I thank you and thank all our guest speakers. We have several requests for the floor from our members.